While Google Chrome is available on Linux, it's not exactly controversial to say that if you care at all about your privacy, you probably shouldn't be using it. Use literally anything else, even just another Chromium-based browser is going to be a better option. But don't worry, because Google says they can be trusted, and they say they really care about your privacy. And they even plan to do something about it. They plan to disable third-party cookies, which are commonly used for doing things like tracking used in advertisements. They say they're going to be banned in 2022. Except not anymore, because now it's going to be blocked in 2023. And when 2023 comes around, it's probably going to be 2024. Let's just forget that other browsers like Brave, Firefox, Safari, even Edge may just block these out of the box without the user having to do anything else. But for Google, the ad money is incredibly important. So for Google, what they need is a private way to track the user. That might sound like an oxymoron, and that's because it is, but that is their plan. And through this insane level of mental gymnastics, they came up with something known as FLOC Flock, or Federated Learning of Cohorts, which certainly doesn't make browser fingerprinting considerably easier. At all, I promise. So what is Flock, you might be asking? So Flock is a part of the Google Privacy Sandbox. Now, don't let that name fool you. Privacy, Sandbox, put them together, obviously must be a good thing, right? No, because they're using Privacy Sandbox to mean something it doesn't mean whatsoever. So I shit you not, this is a set of web standards for websites to access user information without compromising privacy. Once again, the oxymorons continue. So everything in this set of web standards for some reason is bird themed. So flock, it's a flock of birds. Don't ask why they're bird themed. Someone at Google just likes birds right now. But flock is a very different approach for gathering information about a user compared to tracking cookies. So with a tracking cookie, what you would do is you would create this, it would uniquely identify the user and would follow them around the web tracking what they're doing so you can programmatically decide what ads they actually see. With Flock, it doesn't individually identify the user. What it does is it takes your browsing history and then generates a hash locally. And this hash represents what you're generally interested in based on that history. So if you're someone who likes video games and anime and you're male, you're going to be put into the same group as other people who have those same similar aspects. And because some of your interests may change over time, this hash is going to be generated periodically to ensure that you're in a group that roughly fits the taste that you normally have to allow for ads to actually be targeted in a way that actually matches with your interests. And another thing that's being done is ensuring that the group doesn't become too small. So if you have such weird interests where the cohort is only a single person, it's effectively the same as having an ID that individually identifies the user. So with groups like that, they will be merged together to ensure that none of the groups are too small. Now, because the intended use case for a cohort ID is programmatically advertising, this value can be queried through JavaScript. And this is where we start seeing a really big problem and why these cohort IDs and flock make browser fingerprinting way, way easier. While third-party cookies track you from site to site, first-party cookies only operate on the site you are currently on. And a lot of sites require cookies to be enabled to store things like your shopping cart on a shopping site or your login information if you've logged in. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll clear their cookies every so often to make it so the site isn't constantly tracking them. But even if you have all of your cookies completely disabled, you are still not private. Now, browser fingerprinting is the idea where if someone connects to your website, you as the site owner go and collect all of the information that the browser reports about itself. Things like the user's IP address, the plugins they're using, the browser they're actually on, the browser version, the OS they're on, the OS version. And while none of these pieces of information by themselves would be unique, by taking all this information together and a bunch of other information as well and combining it together, you can identify a specific user with roughly in the range of 90% accuracy. 
That is without taking into consideration cohorts. So normally when you fingerprint, you're going to have a really big group and you're going to be trying to identify, let's say, this user right here. And you can do that with a 90% accuracy. So what if instead of trying to identify them from the entire massive group, let's say we have a bunch of little groups. Let's say this user right here is in, what would that be, group three. So now instead of having to work out what person they are in the entire subset, now you have a much smaller user pool to actually guess from. I don't know what accuracy you're going to be able to do that with, but I imagine on a small website, you might have maybe one or two people in a single cohort that you have to guess from. But even on a massive website, it might be a problem because maybe this cohort gets so small that even though all of the other cohorts are quite large because that is the general user base of the website, maybe there's a few users here and there that exist in these very tiny groupings and those users can be identified basically at 100% accuracy. Now, if your site has a login system, you already know who each individual user actually is. But the only information that you as the site owner actually have from these users is the information they decide to provide you. If it is a website like, say, I don't know, uh, Pizza Hut, for example, not sponsored by Pizza Hut. They know your credit card information. They know your address. They maybe know some other little things like that. But what they don't know is things like your politics or your interest in video games or all of this other stuff. But the cohort ID gives them access to that information and not just the value currently. So because we already know exactly who each user is, what we can do is take this user right here and let's say when they joined the site, they had a cohort ID of one. Then eventually it became five, then three, then let's say back to one. We can very easily track those changes. What's going to be done with that information very much depends on the site and their specific policies, but that information is incredibly valuable. And it's not like Google doesn't actually know this because they've admitted this is a problem. So they have said today's fingerprinting surface, even without Flock, is easily enough to uniquely identify users, but that Flock adds a new fingerprinting surface. Google did go and end the Flock trial last month, but they won't be scrapping the project. What they have publicly stated they're exploring is rather than using cohorts, they would instead use topics. Now, if you're like me and you have a brain, you probably realize that cohorts and topics sound like the exact same thing. Because I think in implementation, they basically will be. Basically, it's saying this user is interested in this topic rather than this user is a part of this group of people who likes these topics. I don't actually see the difference. With the current Flock implementation, it can reveal information that you might want to be private. Things like your politics, your sexuality, your health status, things like do you have this specific illness, your financial status, and a bunch of other information in the same sort of vein. In a future implementation under the topic implementation or whatever they do in the future, this information is going to be marked for removal. And then to ensure the fingerprinting isn't made absolutely dead simple, randomly with a small percentage, maybe in the range of 5%, returning a bogus topic. Now, if I was someone doing browser fingerprinting, all I would do then is just not include topics because they're going to make my data worse or just severely decrease the weighting of the topic so you still get some value from it, but it doesn't completely ruin your results. Now, assuming that topics and cohorts aren't the exact same thing, all of these changes would make Flock less privacy invasive. And Google has been spinning this as a good thing. And for Google, it, it certainly is a good thing. But here's the problem. All of their competitors get rid of third-party cookies and then don't replace them with more privacy invasions. Google is first and foremost an ad company. They might seem like a massive tech giant, but at their core, they are an ad company. And when you're an ad company, you're going to try to insert ads into every possible thing you can find and collect as much user data as you can possibly get to ensure that you are giving the user whatever the best ads you can possibly find are to ensure that they might actually buy something from them. But because every other browser is starting to take privacy seriously, Google needs to seem like they are doing something. Even if what they're doing isn't any more private than what we had before, they need to look like they are 
caring about privacy just to ensure that people who don't really look that deep into it aren't going to be bothered. As you might be able to tell from the name, this video is heavily inspired from an article I read over on Forbes titled, Why You Suddenly Need to Delete Google Chrome. You probably should have deleted it years ago, but hey, it's a good article. I recommend going and reading it. Also go and read this article right here from the EFF about why Google's flock is an absolutely terrible idea. I shouldn't need to say this to my core audience, but if you're someone who just stumbled across this video, don't use Google Chrome if you can avoid it. If you have to use Google Chrome, only use it for that one thing that you need Chrome for, and then use literally anything else. I don't care what other browser you use, even Edge is a better option than going with Google Chrome. That'll be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe Sully Bearer Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.